the new block uh, is uh, let me have it just to come back to your course material yeah this is a uh, information access and retrieval this meeting is uh, being okay got it so information access and uh, retrieval uh, this block uh, we will now begin that is actually unit number uh, starts with the unit number 13 okay so let us try to see whether we can really uh, take up at least two units in this day today's uh, talk so <clears throat> information access online and uh, cd rom databases this is our uh, topic unit number 13 so in this uh, uh, what we are really going to discuss is now how this online uh, databases uh, have come into existence so what was the need how these cdrom databases were made necessary why they became important for us because what really happening is uh, these days uh, we say one particular um, you know the phrase like uh, information explosion the information is exploding it is rapidly coming up in such a way they have somebody you know they really wanted so it's an information tide okay and now a lot of information is now you know coming up in these days and uh, so now the the problem has also come up because you know all these things sir uh, why the information is coming up uh, in, in a big scale, in a large scale is uh, the research and development activity is going on like anything in, in a big scale, in a large scale, in the entire world over countries, number one. Number two is that uh, the education is uh, fast spreading, you know, it's going like anything. The education institutions uh, are also coming up, you know, essentially the higher education institutions, the university, etc., etc., also coming up in a very big way. So then what really happens so automatically when the education is coming up and when the research and development actually is going in a big way, naturally, the publications will be many, many and many more. Okay. So the volume of the, the publications the will naturally is, is really going up like anything. And um, when the lot of literature is really going, going up and uh, in, in a coming up in a very big way, coping up with that you know the ever uh, growing uh, the information has become difficult uh, if we really have to have the traditional methods of uh, document publishing or traditional methods of uh, handling of information even by the libraries so so much of information is coming up so many more documents are really coming up and now printing them all is also really difficult uh, and then also then managing them also that means uh, which document is published where what document contains what and then how to really you know keep track of it you know how to really copy or download or say for example let me say if i really want a copy of print material it's there in some other country may not be in india or may somewhere even you don't get it etc there are a lot of difficulties or problems are there so the traditional methods of information management uh, what normally we call managing information is done by the libraries the traditional means of you know in a uh, traditional means manually when you really want to handle the information as it is now it is really becoming not you know viable not really been uh, that good it is not effective also because you can't get the information if the same information is really available in electronic form, in a digital form, okay? Now, what really happens is it has got electronic or digital information resources. Normally, we call in a right manner what we have to say is electronic information resources or digital information resources. We call commonly call them as digital documents, e-books, e-journals, e theses isn't it? E-zines, electronic magazines, e-newsletters, like that. There are all these things. E is electronic. Electronic means digital. So digital documents have got a lot of uh, what you can really say is that, you know, a lot many advantages are there for that. You know, uh, you know, giving the information instantly 
to the user at their laptop or desktop or on, or on their mobiles also is really possible okay so advantages are many if it is a print document i think uh, printing is costly printing takes a lot of time lot of labor also involved in that if it is electronic document i think probably you can create it you know almost uh, without any time delays right now you can really prepare maybe in a short span of time and that can be distributed and delivered to people there is no need to send it through postal methods you pack it up and then you know you have to take it to some kind of you know the courier or the post office fellow and then give them there the postman will really charge you they take lot of mine and time and money and then the delivering it takes time and then you know the printing documents are also normally costly so this is what normally happens so therefore what really happening is now we have developed another kind of viable and very you know cost effective what you can really say we may call it as very you know economical methods i can't say cheap economical methods very economy you know the economy minimizing the economies like economical methods or cost effective methods we have really you know these uh, icts sometimes you call them as also it also information communication technologies it information technology so information technology computers so microprocessors so all these things followed by the communication technology like you know, maybe what you can really say is your wifi or your satellite technology or some other technology by which what really happening is communication technologies are another component then computers and microprocessors and digital public and other public so these three four issues uh, they have really you know helped us uh, to go for digital documents electronic documents and that can be distributed and that can be delivered that can be given to the user uh, almost instantaneously you know you can really uh, now you know you are so comfortable and convenient that everybody uses these days uh, whatsapp everybody uses these days let me say you know email and uh, email attachments like uh, so like that you now when you real talk everybody wants to skype now we are on say for example maybe zoom google meet or zoom etc etc or um, cisco where, you know webex or something like that you know, we have got so many facilities are there where we can interact and we can really communicate like same is the case uh, now what really happens is electronic documents can be easily comfortably delivered created you can uh, you can create a document very easily electronic document at the same time in a cost effective manner it can be really also you know delivered or uh, distributed to the people in a very economic way therefore what really happens is that's our one single statement what i really made in the beginning is that the traditional methods of information management is not conducive is not convenient is not going to help us to cope up with the ever increasing publications and information in this world that's what uh, the information explosion is there information tide is there information overload people called also lot many information is coming than what probably is really required overload of information is there and you know coping up with handling it is has become really difficult like and um, now these days uh, our information uh, you know the, the seekers uh, our users uh, maybe our academics or scientific community or the students or you know faculty or uh, normal people now they really need uh, uh, information with the uh, three demands like you know three they are the three justified demands the very very justified demands like what they really want it that you know i want the information must be what you are really going to give to me information number one the first factor is to be current in nature current means up to date i want obsolete outdated old information is not required for me what i really want is up to date information is required for me i want now by this time what is the latest information that i want so it is justified people want why why should i really have that you know 10 years old or 20 years old news i don't want i want right now what is really happening in my subject area my particular research field or my particular you know topic what is happening now i want the current information current means latest for today's information that's number one demand of the users like number the second demand is that you no know, whatever information you the libraries or main centers or somebody is really provide it to me the information must be comprehensive information comprehensive means exhaustive information jo bhi hai 
on your particular topic i want everything let me see i will make a selection what is really needed for me i will make selection but you provide me everything that is there on a particular topic at a particular subject area and a particular theme of a particular you know, area this area that's number second demand and third demand what people are really going to be you have to provide either this current information or exhaust information this one or two in a cost effective manner i should be able to afford it affordable manner so you can't really say that it should be 1000 dollars i can't do it i don't have a single dollar also isn't it so if you really want to charge i am a student uh, i can really afford maybe 30 40 rupees uh, not not beyond that or maybe 100 rupees at the most 100 rupees to get a particular document but if you really want to charge me 1000 rupees or 5000 rupees sorry i can't make use of it it's not possible for me so even though it is available i can't use it like so these are the three important demands of the current day information seekers and uh, these three demands can be met by using electronic resources digital resources therefore now the different forms of you know the electronic resources are now coming up number one initially it has come up in uh, people really developed or you know created electronic or digital resources and they have really stored in cd roms like or maybe they really sealed uh, diskets like you know discs like you know um, uh, so four quarter or three and a half it's something you know the small small you know floppy disk used to be there you know you must have really remember i don't know whether you have seen it or not so they're floppy disk sometimes you used to do uh, they are magnetic in nature like so then uh, cd is optical in nature optical uh, this optical material so this is a uh, magnetic material etc maybe you know the computer tapes used to be there like your uh, what you can really say is of course uh, the width is slightly bigger uh, than your uh, normal uh, earlier days you used to have that uh, uh, what you really call audio tapes used to be there isn't it for your songs etc etc audio tapes uh, t series etc i don't know whether you remember it or not so the site it is bigger in the thickness but of course that those tapes also used to be there you no know, audio tapes or you know video tapes and then this is uh, you know electronic media is everything is there like so that is really coming up maybe what you can really say is maybe initially it has come up in cds like i'm sure you know cds yes or no you must be knowing cds should i should i show you cd now or you know it cd you must be knowing cd isn't it cd rom what you are compact disk read only memory i just show to you one second Uh, yes. So this is your uh, CD. So this side is a kind of label, and uh, this is on this particular place you are going to really record the information. Like this is CD. So this is uh, the diameter is I think uh, twelve centimeters now. So this 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 is and uh, thickness is uh, twelve mm thickness. So this is an optical disc. So in this, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a circular fashion, the data is really been itched. The C, we, we call that, you know, bonding it into pits and other things like, you know. Uh, so that's how the data is really been stored. I think uh, this is a DVD and um, certainly it's a, a better thing than, uh, you know, it, it has got about 4.7 GB data can be stored on this DVD. DVD is a digital uh, video disc. So this is a, what you can really say is this is a CD. This capacity is small. This capacity is small. Its capacity is higher, very high. Okay. So the DVD, because you know, visual documents, when you really want to record and copy, they take more space like. Now, um, beyond that, um, what's really happening is, yeah, uh, this, is, this is a CD. This is a CD I will just show to you. Uh, so this is only uh, 700 MB capacities in this now. So like that now, there are um, quite a good number of uh, different developments have come. 
normally on the cds you can only write you can't again erase and rewrite so it dare not rewrite a if it is a kind of uh, maybe your uh, floppy disk uh, you can really uh, write on them uh, uh, change it rewrite something or something like delete and add something etc is possible like then i will just show to you now what will really happen is now this is a uh, 4.7 gigabytes gb not mb now this is a very high high density high density uh, dvd this is dvd is of upper version like so i'm sure you will be able to see this now you can, you can find on this now uh, that is 4.7 gb uh, you know capacity 120 minutes of play time if you can really record uh, some you know video recording etc in this you can 120 that means two hours play can be there in this now so then this is a uh, only dvd readable you can write and one that's all right now, another uh, cd is have really come this is another cd what you can really see here uh what is this cd r and w read and write it you can write and write you can you can change write you can read and you can write you can read and you can write anything can change also and this is a new kind of things it's only uh, low capacity 700 mb it's in this not in gbs okay only in mbs so this kind of you know new developments have really come now in this uh, i think you can just see i, I will show you how it will be there in this this is the, this is your uh, okay uh, dvd read and write no, it is a dvd so like this you now these things are there i am sure you know you can uh, make use of it this is this is this is your uh, cd right okay this is a, this is a place where you can really re record the data or information right uh, recording is done by you know uh, some, some laser kind of things will be there that will really burn the cd we normally call while writing it if we will we are burning the cd burning means not putting under fire so we are making pits on that that pits will be zeros and ones will really will be the data what we are really storing in that okay anyway this is one uh, development that's really come up um, so now the cd roms have really come up uh, fast faster and uh, then uh, the i think i believe the cd roms were uh, brought out by silver platter that was a one company who really, which really initiated first bringing out the cd roms into the market all right <clears throat> um, now let's really move on to the area what really uh, we have to really learn from here so because of it all these things are really become possible how these are made possible the computers microprocessors telecommunication facilities i think all these things have really helped us uh, to you know uh, uh, to come out with uh, the digital documents like okay now in this uh, first important thing is now electronic databases okay so why why this electronic what exactly you mean by database i think uh, we have studied in the previous uh, sessions also uh, a database contains uh, several uh, files several records okay so a database contains data or information like okay uh, just one second there is a important call for me uh, just one second somebody wanted
uh, we will i'll come back now hello okay sir oh, sorry why 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 so okay sir thank you there, there somebody some call has come from england that is very important uh so now what we really want to say is database is nothing but uh, it's a containing of so many records or so much of information in that and uh, maybe files like now uh, we are converting these days what actually how the database concept has really come up is now imagine the encyclopedia britannica the new encyclopedia britannica which was support, which, which was in 32 volumes you know okay uh, it was a print version 32 big volumes encyclopedia now it is not coming in print version now it's coming only in a in a, in a, in a cd version like in a, in a dvd version like it's not coming in cd version now it's changed now because now when there are new information is coming every now and then these 32 volumes data we have to real information you have to again uh, change it update it and you have to print it the printing is very costly the changing of information may be about let me say every year there could be a hundred pages data you have to add to the several thousand pages of document that is so the whole document will change its contents will change its uh, index will change its uh, different volumes will change everything will change you know once you can incorporate some new data like so like what really happening is why i am giving this encyclopedia britannica example is earlier those documents which were in print version they have been really shifted and converted into databases and digital documents only I mean to say, wow, the first important point, what you want to understand is the databases have really nothing but initially we used to have the books, so journals, etc., etc. used to be there. They have been now converted into databases, databases like that's the only idea. So the print versions have really transformed into the databases like. So then, of course, when you really wanted to have what exactly you mean by a database, nothing but it is the accumulation of interrelated data. So the data is related to one another, each and everything. Each record has got its own relationship and its own some kind of similarities, etc., etc. Like, so it is an accumulation of interrelated data, and uh, it is in organized in such a way that uh, now people can easily retrieve what you really want from that. Like, so an accumulation of related interrelated uh, data or facts or records, whatever you really call them, and it is you know created using a computer, and then it can be searched and retrieved very comfortably, very easily by the computer. So retrieval is easy. You are organizing those, uh, you know, the data sets or uh, documents or the records or the files in your database in such a way that searching and retrieval is going to be very, very easy and convenient. That is what exactly when you really want to say as well as what is a database like. Okay, now it is basically databases are created for easy retrieval, easy no finding out information from the you know the database like now then what you can really say is these databases etc etc they have really started with the beginning concept was dbms i think yesterday we were talking about dbms so dbms is database management systems like so the dbms were really been the prime uh, movers in this database history now they were developed by we have so much of you know literature documents both by the institutions uh, government uh, business organizations uh, okay you know, then you know maybe in the hospitals etc etc case studies uh, case studies a lot of information is there maybe in business organizations so uh, hospitals so uh, companies uh, then education institutions uh, etc like you know that has been really converted into it was earlier in maybe in print or you know manuscript form that is now really been converted into digital form and we are calling it as database it's an electronic database database is nothing but it's a kind of electronically or using computer you are really created the data it is available in digital form digital means in the zeros and ones only then of course uh, it is uh, arranged in such a way all the data records or uh, files or information in that is maybe it is so arranged so that you know, people can easily, quickly and easily, instantly can uh, check out or retrieve or find out what they really want from the database. That's exactly the idea. Unlike in our uh, print media, it's very difficult like you know, to searching and finding information from a printed uh, documents is very, very difficult. But you know, it is very easy to find out your information from the electronic or digital document very, very easily. Like, okay now because you have got those you know search engines and uh, all those other kind of supporting things like you know they are really been very much available maybe the software or the programs what is really written 
to you know to search and uh, retrieve documents uh, is by the database people what they really do is they really put the data in that and also they organize the data at the same time they also really give a software database vendors database uh, creators they give a software to search and find out the information also so this software also is also available in, along with the database database default contains not only data and records and files but also a, a, a software that software really help you to retrieve the data so that kind of these things will be there in the in the, in the, in the databases like so initially what really happens the the computer database have started in 1960s actually this this database concept has really come up only in 1960s like because that was the beginning days of the computers like which are really coming to picture and in 60s so the computer databases have started in 1960s in 1772 the one small development has come in the, in, in the database like the development is that rdbms relational database management system relational records like you know relating to the kind of things and then linking things etc etc and then uh, you will be able to from uh, multiple uh, you know the value points and uh, standpoints information to be really retrieved etc like that. so dbms was the first one database management systems in 1960s in 72 i think we have got rdbms cars picture has really been come up and then in 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 1980s another development has really taken place in the database this is not really been there with your course material i'm just telling to you for you for your information like so now in 1980s what happened the structured query language sql language has really been developed how to really make a search and then put a query and then search the information from so that kind of a fine component has really been really added in these days that you know yes uh, uh, the because of this sql uh, and a similar kind of the standard query language normally we call so the standard query language they really come up with. then of course uh, the one you know the revolutionary development and the boosting of the you know the electronic resources and all those things uh, has just began almost in 1990 with uh, the invention of computers like internet internet sir so once the internet has really come See the beginning of computers have really helped us to design the databases in the 60s. But you now, once the 1990s, when the internet is really coming to picture, I think the whole situation, the whole scene has really been changed. Like so, internet has drastically revolutionized the publishing aspect. Lot of digital resources, www. Uh, world wide web concept then of course linking the documents uh, then of course putting the references for that and then you know then lot many things have really come up this is what really normally the history of your own um, databases how they really come into picture okay now uh, uh, there are uh, what really happening is these days uh, now you talk about any discipline any subject area you have multiple databases are there and the database are also different kinds like there are uh, databases can be only having the statistical data databases will be having only the kind of graphical picture kind of things etc data databases will have only textual that information will be there descriptive information will be there there can be databases containing only the references and particular on in different subjects etc will be there there are some databases which will have references followed by the abstracts references and abstracts then of course uh, references of uh, the full text also okay then of course there are only references also there are only statistical data so like that there are variant kinds of databases have come into the world okay now what we can really say is uh, they said you know what are the different types of databases that you can really see in this world okay the first one is reference database it will give you only the references of the documents like document full detail full information is not there if it is a journal article if it is a book the book will not be there the journal will journal article will not be full text of the article will not be there what will be there is the article so so and so author the so and so title of his work we published in so and so journal volume number issue number so and so page etc etc information will be there for an article article will not be there article reference will be there same is the case the information about the book will be there this is what normally we call it as metadata this is what we really call it as metadata these things also we what we really call it this surrogates supplements what it this surrogates to the actual data the surrogates to the actual documents we call them as surrogates we we call them as metadata that's a metadata it describes the actual documents only description is only reference information like 
so it contain the reference uh, databases will contain only the reference of the documents uh, and sometimes uh, some of these reference uh, uh, databases will also contain abstracts of the documents also maybe in most of the cases informative abstracts so that people uh, don't need to go through the whole document by looking at the abstracts contained uh, for the that particular document if you can read it you will be able to judge and decide whether it is really going to be useful to you or not so the first kind of database is nothing but reference database the second kind of database in the reference database you don't find the full text of the document the whole document will not be there not even part of the document also will not be there it will only speak about what is the document so on so author so on so publisher so on so etc that information only in order to find the document the references will be there the second kind of database is what we really call as full text database that means in this like your book like your journal like your journal articles etc everything whatever is there in the journal everything whatever is there in the book including pictures to graphs to charts so then you know anything tables to text everything as it is what is there in the book the whole material will be there digitally in this full text databases so full text databases contain the entire text of the document okay that's the second kind of uh, you know the database is like now then there are directory kind of database also only it will give a directory telephone directory is a database for your example okay say for example uh, in, uh, world of learning you know it is a directory of all the universities uh, in the entire world commonwealth you know universities uh, handbook it's a directory it's not handbook it's only directory like you no know? so something like there are directories uh, telephone directory etc directories they'll give only that kind of da database are there then very very important aspect is factual and numerical data i think yes last time when in our class i was just mentioning document database data sorry uh, data uh, then of course uh, yeah the document retrieval data retrieval and also uh, what exactly the other one uh, i think we have i have shown you the fa data fact document and also reference retrieval same thing this is the here also same thing the same thing is application here only You are you are retrieving only data because the database contains only data. Maybe the census report data is there. World, you know, the food production statistics is there. Okay, the the let me say UNESCO statistical year book will give you a lot many statistical data about so many things: book production, food production, this that, population. There are many you know things will be real there in that. So it will show only statistical data. It is it's a factual database. There is no description on that. So there are factual databases are also there. Then of course factual or numerical database. There can be also databases called pictorial databases. Pictorial means pictures only. Okay, only the photographs or pictures will be there. Pictorial database, then numerical or uh, statistical database, reference database, full text database, and also then what you can say is the directory kind of database. Also, these are all the different types of databases that you can really see in this particular world okay now i can tell you now the another very important aspect what we have to really think about is why people have shifted from print and then uh, resources to the electronic resources electronic databases is one very simple important in an electronic or digital document uh, you can preserve uh, the animation music uh, then pictures uh, charts uh, then photographs uh, then of course anything can be there and that so this is a kind of uh, multimedia documents can be created in the digital environment okay when you use digital document digital resources anything can be really created like but it is not possible in uh, print media only you can really that uh, charts and graphs you can put it and text you can write it animation you cannot say sounds you cannot say other the, you know the visuals also you cannot see in the print media isn't it so visuals uh, movements and motions etc you cannot see but everything can be really integrated into the digital documents like so therefore the digital databases have really come into picture and it's uh, you know cost effective very very comparatively very economical and then uh, when people really want uh, they can really you know at any point of time anywhere they are they are, they are there we can really instantly we can deliver to them number two number three is anybody can access it accessing is also very easy searching finding and retrieving and using it is also very very easy so therefore people are really switching on to the electronic data now here is a kind of uh, situation that what really want to say is 
so the digital documents or digital databases or databases will really help us in reducing the time in searching and finding information maybe in production of the documents also it's very cheap the time is also saving like then of course so they will give you current and updated information latest information can be there so today you can revise your own document 10 times who is going to question you you don't need to wait for it to print once and then again you want to again go for another printing that's not fast that not not required you can any any time you can do it then uh, <clears throat> the response time is also very very you know highly you know admirable it's really good and um, they are also uh, going to be very very uh, uh, you know what you can really say the response means searching time like then at the same time you know uh, the delivery is also very very easy therefore people are really preferring for all of them so how this have really come up into the world uh, you know what they really want to say the information is really been created or generated maybe by the scientists or the researchers or academics so we prepare the information the new information out of our own research some new information has really come up like then what really happens uh, this information will be again we are sending into journals or publishing in the books etc or maybe in the reports or maybe in etc etc et et it will go into the print media that's number one okay and then from from there what happens our libraries etc etc will acquire and preserve classify them etc catalog them prepare them and then keep in the life that's one dimension one way of now the, the same thing what happens uh, when a new research has really come up uh, into the world uh, research document uh, that is really been you know collected by the database vendors maybe the journals people maybe the you know the book publisher they take the information and they really publish or you yourself as a publisher also so then of course that you know what they really do is they really do some kind of waiting work to they prepare uh, so some kind of you know they, they processing and packaging etc etc et making it a way clear document and then really they bring out as a database okay so the database vendors will create a data, uh, database and then they really bring it out and um, these databases uh, will have two channels like you know it can really go into the cd rom databases it can be going to a kind of uh, online database online database is uh, you you can't see where it is somewhere in the cloud we don't know where it is really located uh, the the physical physically you can't it's not visible only what really happens online resources can be accessed you can access them you can find them on your internet maybe on your computer maybe on your mobile or some other kinds of things like this okay so uh, uh, but you know uh, it, uh, we, when we when we talk about uh, cd rom physically you can see this is cd rom you can isn't it cd rom is a physical item isn't it cd rom is a physical item so here uh, you can see cd rom like that so cd rom is a physical item and in this you can really find cd rom like that but you know where is the online uh, resource you don't know i don't know where it is like okay it may be resting in a kind of uh, you know computer server of the maybe the database vendor or can be also in other locations also so what you really do is when you really click that particular you know resource hyperlink or uh, something like then it will really go to that particular uh, location where it is there and it will really uh, keeps it open before you that means exactly you can access it like so once the database is created like a book or uh, all those things uh, the the database vendors will collect the information they organize it and they really put it into it and then they, they, they then of course it will really come up as a database the database can be in cd rom form the database can be in online form online is invisible not seen cannot be seen maybe in the cloud maybe in some other different uh, server uh, at some other place we don't know where it is it can be thousands and thousands of miles away um you and me don't know where it is really like okay so then when you really want to talk about cd rom what happens sir now physically it will be with you in your like a book in your library you can keep it preserved there any number of times anybody can really use it and there no really only once you purchase it cd roms are purchased okay and uh, online for this databases or online resources what you really do is you pay money to access it only to use it only you really pay money and it is not with you they won't give you all the time for you to keep it with you so it is only access you 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 get the right by making the payment the right what we really called as access rights 
not a permanent light a right not a perpetual right like of course there are in these days what really happening is since i have really made the payment for this particular product or this particular item you should also give a perpetual access for continuous access all through that kind of you know the licensing agreements we are really making for the online resources there are different terms and conditions are there okay that uh, uh, that is what we say licensing agreements you make the payment to access basically then you know how that can be really with me so in that we have some agreements are there how many people can use it uh, whether it can be simultaneously used by 10 members or two members or two users or 10 users etc okay how many number of times you can really make a copy or print out how much what is the extent 10 pages 20 pages 30 pages 50 pages how much you can really print out you cannot print out the whole database isn't it so the kind of you know restrictions will be there so all those things will be really decided by the the by the by the publisher or what you really call vendor when you are really been coming into the licensing agreement the agreement will speak about all those things because it is a fluid thing we don't know where it is and uh, that kind of situations are really been required for us but if it is cd rom is in your hand physically so therefore it is very easy to now uh, okay any number of people can really use it there's a kind of advantage with the cd rom also so therefore people are initially they really started using cd rom then of course later switch over to dvds now cd rom for initial only write only and uh, uh, you cannot rewrite on that now okay write only medium once you write written on the cd means it you cannot change it like uh, you cannot rewrite on that you can make any you cannot make any corrections on that like now the new developments have come read and write i think you can write and rewrite etc etc you can change like any floppies or a disk etc or your you know pen drives or what you are these days using like that you can now use it like that so kind of new developments have come in the, in the later past of it like so cd roms uh, no on site online services only okay now that means uh, within your physical library you can you can use it like okay single user at any point of time that one one cd can be used by only one user like okay now uh, then of course um, multiple uh, users when you really want you have to keep it on lan or it can uh, and then people can use it your your local area network if you can really create and put it there the, those who are using your local area they can always use it like okay so this is what as far as your uh, cd ram etc is concerned now coming back to the developments in cd ram i think i just told you uh, that you know uh, these um, user uh, can get uh, his required information from the databases now normally in an interactive manner that's what exactly you really make a question it will be really giving you the response back to you that kind of interaction interaction means i ask something you are really going to answer me i answer something you really going to question me so like that you no know, in interact manner i think uh, the databases will really help in searching and finding information like something like what you can really say is in a conversation mode what i am really going to do is the same thing conversation like you may sometimes after this whole session is over you may really put a some question to me if i really know i will be really able to answer to you also that's conversation you ask me i answer you you ask me i answer you something like that it's a conversation mode that kind of things will be there so then of course uh, um what really happens is now i am at a different place and somebody will you the visitors are at some other place so huh? still we are really going to have a kind of dialogue we can have some kind of interaction interactive mode or some kind of conversation and we can really get the information or retrieve information whatever you really want that's possible from these uh, uh you know the databases like even though the people uh, you know using the databases online database etc etc maybe distantly located at some other place but still you can really make it that like so distance is absolutely not a criteria wherever you can sit uh, wherever you are there you can really make use of this kind of online resources like so there are uh, what you can really say is okay <clears throat> there are uh, basically people say there are three generations of uh, the online services are there there are three generations how these online database services are really been uh, created like the first generation they really want to say host based and uh, what you can really say is that is a character based like character means not my character or your character character means uh, the, the, the 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 digital uh, you know the text or whatever you really want that, that character i am uh, talking about i'll tell you and the text kind of thing words etc that is what exactly we mean the character type like. here now it is a host based means first generation that means the database vendor will be providing it to you you can really use only typing and printing uh, that uh, and typing the words or etc etc and then you get the response etc so i type something i get some response etc this is called character based information like okay 
then afterwards the second generation uh, things what really happened is uh, in the second generation you have got the graphic based gui graphical user interface based method like gui method, method like graphics icons and pictures you don't need to type it say for example when i really want to go to zoom i can uh, click that zoom uh, icon then zoom will get open to me i don't need to really uh, type that you know zoom address etc url address this that and then then on like click enter then the zoom will open isn't it so no not like that now we have got icon based icons have come icons are symbols like icons are like you know some pictures like there is a picture on the you click on the picture picture will open so that is a facility for you you don't need to really type and write and write and then ask for something there are images are there pictures are there click the picture you get that second development so the database will be there then third one is what you can really say is it is a um, agent based like you know agent based means uh, now what really happening in these days uh, the, the way how we are interacting with all the databases is client server based methodology we call it as client server i am a client my my required information database is with some maybe the publisher or the vendor but from here through my computer i am really asking that man to give that to open that thing etc and he is opening to me so it is again a conversation mode like interactive mode only but you know what really happening is you know i really put a question and they understand and they really respond back to me so this is what exactly client server server is at some other place the database some other place i am here maybe in uh, my own residence or my own house or my own office or uh, my college or university from here i am really searching and getting like this a client based client server this kind these are the two three developments what you can really say as far as the evolution of the uh, online services have really come so in the uh, what really happens uh, in the, the last category now um, uh, uh, software objects uh, they can conduct business on behalf of users uh, even when they are not connected to the network also is possible so that kind of software also we have really developed anyway there are so many online uh, databases are there in these days so many online databases are there you talk about proquest ebsco scopus web of science uh, okay science direct uh, psych information uh, psychit uh, oh you talk anything okay uh, project muse telran francis you talk anything like that there are so many online databases are there so i think most of the databases are coming online these days only okay so they have given some name something like vrs bibliographic retrieval system dialog was there the online services like dialog online service is very popular like you know i told you initially silver was the first company to bring out uh, the production of spaces were developed silver platter silver platter means uh, people oh silver platter is cd rom national library of medicine so i think now you have got what you can really say
can it could be problem so then uh, friends hello हेलो हेलो सर किरण हेलो किरण हेलो हेलो सर सर हेलो आर यू एबल टू लिसन टू मी सर व्हाट्स द प्रॉब्लम फ्रॉम माय साइड और फ्रॉम योर साइड योर साइड सर ओके लेट्स कंटिन्यू नो सॉरी फॉर दिस आई थिंक दिसमिंग प्रॉब्लम 
uh, maybe that internet uh, uh, problem is there okay now uh, we will uh, we are trying to really learn something about our uh, online database and uh, uh, cdrams etc now in that context there are so many databases are there like you know dialog uh, oclc database and then fsco project muse uh, and then there are many things are there i think uh, there is no depth for that and uh, what really happened one thing we have to always understand that you know these days sir uh, in place of uh, cdrams and uh, cdram databases sir, many are uh, always available on uh, online only uh, they are, they are available online only okay they are available hello can is it you deep bro vastu thana audio leda pura deep na kanto okay right so now there are many multiple uh, you know thousands and thousands of databases are there now if it is say like, for example in the field of library and information science of course we will also discussing it later, 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 later in this uh, session only we have got to lisa library information science mm -hmm. abstracts recently one new uh, uh, database has really come that's called list of library information science technology abstracts like then uh, you can you have got information science abstracts you have got ilsa indian library science abstracts from ias like okay so then you have got library literature like so like that when you really want to say if you really want to find information on library and information science or library science related topic or theme you have got quite a good number of databases are there there no one single database in one subject there are multiple databases in one subject like that is to be correctly understood by that and most of them are either uh, available on cd or or, or online uh, i think online databases are you know coming up in a big way than the cd ram database okay yeah yeah so like that you know there are uh, multiple databases are there anyway uh, let us uh, look into the uh, real features of cd rom cd roms are normally 660 mb capacity is a disk circular disk having 12 cm in diameter and 1 12 mm in uh, sorry 1.2 mm in thickness like 1.2 mm thickness and then uh, 12 cm in diameter like okay so this is what a uh, circular disk and uh, it is actually it's an optical media so our uh, tapes and uh, our uh, uh, floppy disks etc earlier disks uh, they are uh, magnetic tapes magnetic in nature this is an you know, optical in nature like okay they accommodate more capacity more more information on that okay then of course the the, the data is stored in the form of uh, bits and land that, that means one is a uh, Uh, you know the bit other one is a uh, base like bits and uh, the something like zeros and ones in that context the data is really been uh, told in that in this cd rom database now with the advanced kind of things what you really got is dvd digital video disk we really call dvd high capacity just now i really shown to in that you can really keep uh, for a lo lot of uh, data or information etc and then motion pictures so then uh, visuals so all those things can be we uh, very to, to a very comfortable extent you can really accommodate that but uh, uh, cd capacity is very less uh, dvd capacity is very very more like uh, the multimedia documents can be really stored on that uh, so this is one thing i think uh, dvd normally 4.5 gigabytes space will be there in that 4 and 1/2 4.5 gigabytes space will be there but only 60 660 you uh, know megabytes will be there only in cd so that way the you know dvd has got high uh, capacity it is uh, almost six times to more than the cd capacity like okay now the cd rom you can really have your text you can have your animation you can have your uh, motion visuals etc etc anything you really want including uh, audio everything text everything can be really accommodated in that that's the beauty of the you know digital resources etc then of course uh, what is that is 
anything that is available in cd rom is permanent in nature you can't really erase i can't stop only thing you can really scratch and uh, damage it but what you really stored in uh, cds and dvds it's a permanent once for all like you cannot really you know delete it like and you cannot really you know erase it uh, if you still want what you can really say you can um, simply crush it and then spoil that's the only way if you really want to do it then portability is there that means you can you can take from here to there you are, you can keep your bag you can go to your office you can go here there you can also send to some other place also your posting is very easy because it's very thin document you can always put an envelope and send it so it goes on to wherever you really want it like its cost is very low then you know any number of times any number of people can really use it like but not simultaneously only once but you know today i can use it today for some time or sometimes some other also can use it and any number of time anybody can really use it like uh, there is no limit on the use of that but you know when you are talking about online resources there is a limit is there now this can be used if they will give you one electronic book will be given to you it can be read only you know say for example uh, these many days and afterwards it will not be there you can really only something like that restriction will be there one user etc like okay then um, what you can really say is uh, now you can also put this uh, cd is in a network mode people can really use it multiple many people can use it in the it put the, the cd yeah, kept in a kind of uh, land environment also any number of people uh, in the land they can really use it like that kind of facility always will be there it's a, it's a physical item for you like a book okay so there are not many restrictions on that now it is very good for uh, libraries because they save a lot of library space so so maybe a 1000 books can be very comfortably can be accommodated or at least 100 books can be accommodated in a particular one city like so how nice it is now cd how the thickness or you know the the space it is really going to accommodate or uh, it's very very small very small when compared to the physical uh, books like so that way uh, then of course multimedia information can also be there you can also use it in network environment like you know lan if you can really keep it like that these are all the advantages of the cd rom cd how we really you can advantages the permanent in nature you can't erase it and uh, any number of times you can really use it it's a permanent you are permanent uh, you know the property for you you can really it will be with you only nobody will ask you or uh, nobody will stop you any you know restrictions on like an online resources like so that is unlimited use can be there cost is very easy and portability standing from here to there there to here you can really send it by post or you can carry with your bag or something like something i think uh, slightly may not be in your uh, purse or pocket but at least you can in your, in your handbag you can put it and go take it like at least in your handbag you can at least take it at least not not less than 100 cds or 200 cds you can easily comfortably carry in your handbag okay like that so that's exactly the 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 the, the advantage of uh, cd roms now um, so what really happening is uh, uh initially the price was slightly more but you know as time goes on i think the cost is easy and uh, making copies are easy uh, converting uh, earlier uh, cd production like you know preparing another new cd for the same document uh, for which you used to really depend on the only that uh, vendor or uh, supplier or the you know the fellow or uh, something like that but now what happens your own normal technology in your computer system cd your own uh, desktop or laptop etc supporting you can system you can burn any cd any time instantly and the number of copies can be really uh, produced without much you know inconvenience uh, when uh, that is you know cd to cd disk to disk copy disk copying is very easy so burning cd and then converting into another more cd is very cheap like you know it it, it won't take uh, much only cd cost maybe maybe 10 20 rupees that could be the only cost it won't take any other cost like okay then um, what you have really created and kept in the cd what you have really kept as a digital document in cd in, in a compact disk or cd rom it is once for all permanent you can't revise it it you can't revise it suppose data information is changing you can't change in that you have to again create a new document okay so that is what um, access is limited to one person at one time uh, many people cannot really use it like as i told you that the escape for that is that if you can really have a lan in the lan if you can really put your cd people can really use it that's another way so the the these are some of the you know the drawbacks then at the same time uh, compared to online searches cd ram searches are slightly slow searching cd ram databases is comparatively slow when compared to the online databases like yet uh, these are either online or uh, cd rom database searching is uh, more comfortable than print resource like so if you can really look into that that's what i mean 
then of course then um, so these are all some of the you know the issues as far as your uh, cd roms are really concerned now we have got um, cd or is cd recordable you can really uh, record and then uh, do it like you have got so many standards have come for the cd roms and um, they okay so now let us uh, one uh, one question really is there in this uh, that what is the difference between cd rom databases and uh, how these cd rom databases are uh, uh different or uh, similar to the online database what advantages of the like so when it is online database system so now the that will provide only access okay but where cd rom it is really it's a storage technology i think you can have that uh, for everything you can, you can preserve it right? so online systems uh, i think the data will be more elusive and then uh, but you know in cd rom uh, databases the data will be there in optical uh, media so optical storage media so you can share the databases uh, through online and uh, only thing is you can uh, you can own the resource if it is in cd rom like uh, then you know what happens in in many situations uh, for online databases uh, now you have to pay as you use pay for use so earlier that used to be there in the dialogue and all those things uh, databases for online they really come up uh, how much time you are on using the searching and using the online databases for that time the the the, the, the cost will be really calculated and charged you. the charging of the it was in those days now things have slightly changed now that 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 style has really been changed now so once for all you have got access in number of time in time you can really the time factor now it is not there when the book was really been written uh, in those days that was a factor the factor was that how much time you were really there on the online database either for searching and retrieval that much of amount of time i think maybe how much you have downloaded how much you are really how much time you spent on that or or the criteria for charging the for billing you for the online databases but no that has really many times change now so you have got access round the clock access facilities there now there is no question of uh, limiting charging for the time how much you really used in these days okay that change has come but you know as far as the cd roms are concerned it is in your library in your place only in your house only you can use it whenever you really want nobody really bothers about that. there is absolutely there is no other charge for that nobody can really charge you anything like that and um, what really happens is if you use more this online uh, databases uh, you have to pay more that was the context in the, in the past okay now it is not that now it is not that Huh? Yes, I am not online. No. Okay. So uh, this is what, uh, as far as you know, then um, searching is online is very fast when compared to CD ROM searching. Then uh, multiple file searching is possible online. Like so, different databases you can search online. Okay. So here only the, those uh, databases what you have access to in the database or in the CD ROM can only be searched like. they are uh, fast and real time and uh, uh, that's what exactly difference between your online and the cd rom databases um, okay uh, then of course we will go on to the other aspects like you know uh, the online databases uh, in cd rom form is like in the in the in the past now on chemical abstracts uh, biological abstracts uh, then you can really say current contents that was the, that used to be really brought out by current contents prime uh, isi institute for scientific information i think you know Uh, Eugene Garfield. Sir. So then, the current contents. Uh, then, of course, uh, Adonis is a full text database in biomedical subject. Like okay, so like that, there are so many databases. Uh, they used to really come as uh, online and CD ROM databases. Now, one important aspect they really also want to talk uh, talk about the uh, electronic journals. Like uh, so, the electronic journals. Uh, they are all nothing but uh, people call it as uh, digital journals. Uh, the same journal which is really coming up in digital form. it is a it's a paper based journal it's not in the paper like isn't it these electronic journals uh, actually what you can really say it can be uh, online journals that means uh, you know um, uh, uh, e journals are medical med they can be accessed through internet like many times of course they can be also available in, in a uh, cd or a dvd form when they are aggregators are there they are really important due to also that possible like okay and uh, now coming back to that you know uh, the, the when you talk about electronic journals uh, 
they are uh, what kind of formats then ascii is only for text format then of course the scanned images etc like pdf etc will be there then there can be uh, the, the, the documents can be there in html format hypertext or sgml standard graphical you know the markup language then of course uh, html is uh, hypertext markup language something like that then there can be multiple formats also can be real html sgml uh, uh, rich text format uh, then of course pdf format uh, i think there are many ascii format this could be the file formats uh, formats like in which the data can be really stored all those things okay then uh, the another important aspect is that uh, uh, coming to the now <clears throat> some of the issues are uh, slightly you know they have really not very um, uh, pertinent for the present times so in this uh, um, when you really information retrieval from online systems and uh, how they are really been uh, retrieved is one important aspect um, so the information retrieval from online systems uh, models and protocols now in this context uh, the uh, internet uh, uh, has really facilitated us to access information with a lot of speed and uh, frequency and then uh, this you know digital technology has helped us to update our knowledge and uh, they have also helped us in uh, searching and retrieving information so it really become very easy and very convenient in these days like okay so online system models uh, you know it is what they really there is one model is known as a, a conventional model second one is a, a, what we call it as client server model i understand so when you say the conventional model is a, a normally you know you you take your uh, cd and uh, search on that the second model is you put some kind of question and it will try to give it like other one is uh, we are using the z39.50 protocol system uh, to search for information and give you like that's what we call it as client server method normally typing and then asking information is one model that is traditional model so the other model is uh, interactive manner so you really put a question and it will really convert it into the usable searchable uh, keywords and will really search a database and give you back the answer like this is what exactly we call as client server model and the client server is somewhere you put a question it will really convert into the kind of correct uh, you know the setup question like and using for correct keywords even though you did not use the correct keywords it will really convert and then it ask you uh, do you mean this this etc etc and then it will really get you back the information etc so that kind of things will be there as well as uh, the two methods of uh, searching information is there there is one component is called uh, z39.50 it's a kind of uh, information search protocol like so what really happens uh, the z39.50 is a uh, information retrieval protocol information search and retrieval protocol every database will have some kind of data information or records in that every database will have a kind of uh, its own style of arrangement of records its own style of searching information also so this is what happens in order to search and retrieve information that database also will be giving you along with the database inbuilt within that uh, a software will be there so that you will be able to search otherwise what happens all the records you have to search one by one in a linear order that's not the you see so the search uh, you know the kind of uh, you know how to search information and how when you search information how it you should really get back to the information etc all the software will be really set software information search and retrieval software will be there many times uh, separate for each data data database like every database will have its own uh, different uh, software to search and retrieval like so now what really happens uh, if i am using uh, you know four databases so uh, to get information from a particular subject like then what i have so uh, i have to use different four kinds of search techniques the search techniques will naturally will be different like so then uh, to overcome that what happened uh, this z39.50 protocol if the database vendor uh, prepares his database compatible suitable to z39.50 standard now once uh, if you really prepared a query uh, uh, search query search question that can be applied to any databases without changing it like you know automatically it gets uh, automatically converted into the database style and it will really give you information like so it is what exactly we call z39.50 is uh, 
it's a it's like you know you have got common communication format ccf so as far as the uh, bibliographic uh, record uh, format is concerned now it is uh, the it's a common uh, search language like common protocol for searching of different databases what you really call it as search that 9.50 so this is a common user interface will be there even though you put a some query question i think that question will be really converted into the suitable terms of that particular database to retrieve information so that is what exactly happens as far as this and uh, then of course what you can really say is this is all precisely as far as your you know uh, cd rom databases and online databases and um, uh, another half an hour time is there we will talk about database uh, such strategies okay this is uh, one part of our own uh, today's uh, discussion then we will move on to the next uh, unit the next unit is what you can really say is database searching and search strategy database searching and search strategy i think that we will uh, try to quickly do it in i think maybe in another half an hour probably we have time is it it uh, half an hour time probably we'll after our five minutes we'll try to really finish up all these things like uh, okay now database how to search and uh, before you really search a database you naturally have to have a search strategy what is strategy your plan you should have a plan before you search it. in the in, in the olden days what used to be there in the beginning days of uh, online uh, searches uh, you used to really prepare your uh, search question or search query how it should be really formulated how it has to be really you know created you create your own question first so i am really going to ask this particular question so in this question what are the synonyms what are the you uh, know the kind of related terms what are the actual term what is the standard terminology what is the kind of you know thesaurus uh, accepted descriptor is what what is the standard term i can really use it say for example say medical uh, you know the information when you are really going to use it the mesh is there medical subject headings list from there you have to take the controlled uh, vocabulary terms normally the mesh terms are used as index terms in all these medical data basis like so like that uh, uh, when you are searching can search uh, cancer search when you are searching medline search when you are searching some other you know the uh, nursing uh, or some other kind of you know the database when you are going uh, i think in those days in those times what happens they are all using they are all using only mesh uh, terms like if you really can um, prepare your own search query using that uh, machine uh, the mesh uh, accepted terms sir then that could be quite easy for you you will be able to really um, quickly get the information what you are asking like so like that you should be uh, what i really want to say is in the past uh, people used to prepare their own search question in advance and keep it ready why it is so like that now people are not doing it was it, they used to do it in the beginning days because i just now told you if it is online database search how much time you are on the online database for searching or retrieving or you know printing or downloading whatever it may be how much time you are on the database for that time that much of time you are charged so charging is based on the time spent by you on the online database in the past not now not now in the past so therefore what people used to carefully because i have to really save a lot of time prepare a question everything my my own question or my own search query or search statement in a meaningful way using boolean operators or and or not then of course the range i want only this information not that information i want only information from this period to this period i want this you know everything you really sit down calmly prepare your question what question is search query normally we call it as in our general so search query you formulate you prepare meaningfully correctly using your own synonymous word words like you know either or 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 this etc food or nutrition or diets etc etc international relations or foreign relations or external etc etc and india okay along with, for india you really want so like that you know you prepare your own search query meaningfully and keep it ready open the database and put the question or the search query then uh, your time is saved no sitting there at that time formulating query was difficult like that's what exactly so what i really want to say is you have to you know 
think about uh, before you search any database uh, the most important aspect is that uh, you should have a proper search query search statement has to be meaningfully prepared well in advance before you really make a search on any database i think uh, that's very very important now because uh, cdrm database are uh, in your place only they are with you only you can do it comfortably any time but if it is online probably that was the situation earlier uh, so now things have been changed that's one thing but with all said and done when you really want to find information from a database what you really want to find you should have a statement isn't it that's what we really called as search query on which and which aspect and which topic and which area you really to what extent you really want information you have to formulate a search statement we normally call it as a search strategy the strategy is your own plan what exactly you want you have to really put it in some good standard keywords alternative words this that all those things and make it a meaningful search like okay that's number one so search strategy is more important is important uh, is a priori you need to have in, in advance uh, before you really go and search for some information like okay now uh, the other aspect what we really want to talk about this is so that's what you know building a search strategy is more important in your uh, information search and retrievers like and um, the search strategy means what what it really include is all the activities i am talking i am trying to define the search strategy okay search strategy includes all the activities um, involved with searching a database okay searching component is also part of search strategy only searching right from reference interview of the user like you know you are uh, a user is there before you he wants some information no you have to elicit it you have to make it very clear as to what he wants so making it very clear by conducting a, a some talking to the person who wants information uh, what is exactly the scope of his real area what is what exactly he really want somebody will really come and ask you i want information on uh, cancer treatment is a very big uh, term you no know? cancer treatment is not uh, if there are millions of uh, documents are there cancer what you really do it if i can give million document to user user will really break his head i uh, know it's not going to really make any difference so then uh, no what you will do then you ask the user what you will exactly you really want in cancer treatment sir i know i want uh, uh, the you know uh, side effects for the cancer treatment what side effects so i am using chemotherapy for the throat cancer for the, i have a patient with throat cancer i am using chemotherapy chemotherapy has got a side effect now how to overcome the problem of side effects arising out of chemotherapy used for the treatment of throat cancer that is my topic so people normally come and i want to on uh, treatment of cancer or i want uh, how to overcome side effects etc but they don't say meaningfully what exactly so the actual topic what he is asking is that so the throat cancer patient is there for him the treatment given was uh, chemotherapy and then uh, chemotherapy has got some side effects so now my subject of interest is how to overcome the problem of side effects arising out of using chemotherapy for the throat cancer this is my topic how you will really know it people people don't reveal like that i as a user of information also maybe it is my, my mind that i am really asking for that but i am not expressing correctly so this kind of dialogue between the user and the information searcher like librarian you have to do that's the first this is one of the important aspect information search you know retrieval when you are going to do it you have to really elucidate make it clear what the user exactly expects from us in searching the information like so information search strategy includes that interview interacting with the user etc also is one part searching of information is one part then of course verifying the final output also after you really get the whole output there can be some irrelevant documents also irrelevant information also must be really coming in that that you eliminate distill it and filter it and then you really refine it and then give it like the whole process not only making a search statement in a proper way 
search query in a proper way is one aspect interacting and interviewing the user to find out what exactly he wants and what he speaks from that you are really converting into search terms and then after that you really submit your search query to the database then you get some you know some an output and that output also you try to then look into it whether you know the output is really coming out as expected etc and then you try to really refine and then give it so the whole lot of things you know they really want to say this is search strategy search strategy not only constructing your own search query but only it, it includes everything like that's what uh, the you know the meaning or definition is as far as search query search strategy really concerned like okay there are some basic principles are there in uh, you know formulation of the search query search query formulation principles we have some principles those principles are given by somebody his name is hoover in the year 1982 he gave some basic principles the first principle in your search search strategy is that you interview the information seeker what he exactly wants try to understand it first he speaks something but you understand something and you said something else whole thing is mess whole thing is mess i think it should not happen like that so you calmly interact with the user what exactly he wants what is his actual you know the focus area what exactly he wants specifically what is his request what is the interest so that you have to really make it very clear through interaction like then you know conceptualize the search topic that means after talking to him you really try to understand oh this person is really asking for this kind of this kind of information from me so he wants this kind of you know the statistical data he wants this kind of you know the the, 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 the data like that he wants you know the journal uh, literature like that he wants something like that you know so he wants some kind of photographs of this nature he wants some kind of data. so you are clear is a topic he wants this etc okay so conceptualize the search topic try to understand it correctly okay when you are after talking to him then now what you have to do is what you understood the search you know the query posed by your user what user wants that's particular subject query you have to convert into the standard keywords or controlled vocabulary terms using the thesaurus in your domain area in your subject area so medical subject headings mesh is there test is there thesaurus of engineering and science uh, scientific terms etc so like macro thesaurus is there that is in the field of social science etc etc like so you have got so many thesaurus in his thesaurus is there in the nuclear energy etc so you have so many thesaurus are there so use the thesaurus vocabulary and using that to cover the standard term because those subject databases must be using only that standard vocabulary in the in the domain, in the discipline area like so you also use it that same uh, vocabulary terms uh, so that what happens uh, matching your question with the index terms that are there in the database will be easy you will get a good output like otherwise you know you use different terms uh, the database has used different terms to index it the database uses different terms to index it you are you know asking uh, different terms to seek information it is difficult so you will be there every possible that you won't get uh, what you really require in the back okay then interact with system so when you say interact with the system means uh, now system has got its own uh, you know the, the facilities and provisions will be there so that you have to really try to understand what this you know the the kind of database is really going to give you etc you have to always uh, look into that and uh, then i think you know what kind of facilities are there i think maybe Uh, how to browse uh, how to search and how to find how to get out put what kind of output will they, in what style of uh, you know references should really come what so there are so many that uh, system facilities are there to try to really know about system facilities also so the system uh, interact and then then system capability also will be there sometimes what happens uh, system will help you in formulating your search query expand its tree then of course truncation okay these kind of things also will be there in that that also you can really use it using all those things you have to always formulate a search query so in search query you have to first interview the person get the knowledge what exactly he wants convert it you first understand conceptualize it then put it into use a thesaurus and then uh, formulate your search terms and then see what kind of facilities are there with your system and then of course you really make use of them 
and then formulate your own question and submit the question to database and get the output line. So this is the style of you know, searching line. Okay. Then uh, coming back to, <clears throat> there are two ways of uh, search strategies, like two search strategies, two methods. That's what you know. It has really been there in your uh, this thing. What do you say? Initial strategies are used for formulating initial search requirements to submit to the online catalogs. Like so, you give some search terms, you get some information back. That is the first one. Then of course, what happens uh, afterwards? Uh, if you don't get adequate information, the expected information from that, you have to reformulate, restate, refine it. And then you, this is the same way how you can really grow it. So when you are doing it, what happens? If you get more information than what you are really expecting, you have to really narrow down your search query to get less information. If you are not targeting anything, I think you have to really reformulate your search strategy to really broaden it. So if I really say, um, no, optics is light. So I really want something on uh, infrared rays. Probably I get something, but you know, if I can really see under light, I'll get more information, not only infrared rays, but other things also will really be there in that. So like that, when you use a broader heading, you are going to get more information. In those more information, you are likely to get your own information. Okay. So if you really use a uh, focused or a narrower keyword and search for the information, you will get only small information, little information only. Say when you when you want optics information on the information on light, you may get little information. If you can really go into textbook of physics, in physics books you get naturally heat, light, sound, electricity, maximum, etc. All will be there in uh, physics book, isn't it? So go to physics book. I think that information also will be there. So you go for a broader heading. So that you will be getting more information. That is what exactly you really say. The recall will be more when you use broader terms. Okay. The pressure will be more when you really use the narrower terms, specific words, etc. So this is keep in your mind and then you have to really make your own search strategy and search. When you, if you don't get much information, then broaden your uh, search query. Okay. You have bigger term than that and get more words. Then you try to scan it and get what exactly you really want. Now, then if the more uh, information output is really coming up, you really give a narrower or very thin scoped uh, heading, then what really index entries, then what happens, you will get small number of things. So your search can be always widened or narrowed down. You can really get more items, you can get only less items, depending on your item, you can do that. Okay. Then uh, searching your online uh, catalogs. Okay, this is another part is there. So we have online database, one aspect, online catalogs, one thing like, you know, if it's an online catalog, library catalog, you are talking about library catalog, they are online, okay? You are searching something like your OPAC, like, uh, okay? This is uh, online catalogs are going to be used by your library users, okay? They, that is the end users, like. Then um, in the uh, online catalog, what really is the situation is, the catalog entries are really been there, records are there in marked format normally, okay? Then, of course, for each and every entry, maybe the author field, title field, class number field, etc., etc., those fields, etc., will be there. Then, subject keywords also will be there. You can search on any of them, you will really get it. Like, okay. Then, in the, in the case of uh, what will be there in your uh, the contents in the records, I think this is the situation. Then, uh, how you are really going to search for your online catalog is, uh, I think uh, this is what people say this is a menu driven uh, searches like. You can search by author, you can search by title, you can search on keywords, etc. You can search from, so that kind of, this is menu. So you, they'll give you author is something with the field is there. There you can say author, that information. You can really want to search on the you know, title, you can search on title, etc. This is what exactly happens. Now the methodology of uh, searching for information is, uh, there are specific item searching is, there are two types again, searching the, your catalog or uh, your database also, what it may be. So there are two things. I know that particular document, then I'm searching for it. I know there is an author called Ferguson who wrote a book in organic chemistry. Okay, Ferguson. Then I said, I'll go and uh, see the catalog under Ferguson. Then Ferguson number is so and so and so, his class number is so and so, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, 540, 540, some, some number will be there. I think you are really going to get it and then you go and use it, okay? So this is searching for a known item is one kind of search. This is very rarely happens. People know it, therefore they are asking for it happens very rarely. 
majority of the 95% of the searches will be asking for a particular information which they don't know that you know there is an author there is a kind of document uh, and they wrote on this my particular area i am i don't know i don't know but i am searching so searching for unknown items the first category is searching for a known item known document whose author or title is really known to me i am searching by author searching by title that's what exactly these are all the i said uh, our searching style is what say menu driven there is a menu is there author title uh, subject keywords etc so subject keywords column you put subject keywords author column you put author name you the author data will really come out like so that is menu driven and for a known item the other things is what exactly is what you can really say subject searching you are searching by subject of the document you don't know which document is going to be there once you search it what is going to come to you you don't know so that is what exactly we call subject searching also there are two kinds of searches will be there subject searching and also this uh, known item searching but if that's what you know the studies reveal that there are about 70% of searches are essentially subject related i think this is what exactly recorded here but to my knowledge i think more than 90% of the searches will be only only subject searches more than 90% okay anyway so in this uh, when you really want to make subject searching what is expected by you for you to know before you really make a search like that? so you have to know about the subject field in which you are asking for some information you should know very correctly don't give a, a search uh, information some keywords without knowing what it is okay you should know what exactly the subject area and in which what you are going to really ask for so then at the same time you should also know something about uh, the thesaurus available in that particular field that means uh, for your subject query what could be your index uh, uh, the, the the search terms you can really use it like uh, because thesaurus is thesaurus terms are used uh, for indexing the documents in the database if you can use the same thesaurus uh, to construct your own search query i think it is very good the matching is very comfortable like isn't it so that you should really know about it then at the same time now you should also have the knowledge of search capabilities of the online so in this particular online catalog what facilities are there for you okay what is that menu what is the kind of facilities are there you should also really know it then you should also know something about your own subject then you can really know the and uh, how to you know submit your own search query and then get the data this is why, what exactly your requirements so the, the when when you are going to make a subject searching where you are really going to search is you can search on subject field subject headings fields are there na there you are going to make a search on that otherwise sometimes what happens uh, the subject denoting representing uh, keywords many times will be appearing in the title of documents so you can search on titles also then of course title field and at the same time document will have a class number classification number that will be also there in the catalog isn't it document its class number or call number will be there so you can search under call number you can search on subject headings component you can search under title but not the something other thing other is difficult for you okay this is what you can really think about searching for subjects like you know then of course uh, uh under the 10 5 then we will really do it so in the searching what are our search methods i just you know tell you you can really search on the keywords first search searching the subject fields on the keywords first you have got one keyword or multiple keywords put the keywords and search this is a simple way there is also an advanced search is there i think many of the databases will give you if you want you can really write down one by one some of the things are not given i am just telling to you okay in your course material it is not so first thing what you can really do is now you have a subject requirement which database is going to deal with it very properly appropriately up to date information exhaustive information or you know what you can really say is comprehensive information containing database what is that in your field you have to understand first try to identify which because i told you know in every subject field there are multiple databases are there their coverage is also different then time period is also different okay then you know there are other things like you know there you know yeah this at least suppose the coverage when i said the coverage of some some documents will really contain only journal articles some are containing only articles and conference papers some are containing articles then uh, 
conference papers, then uh, reports, and uh, something else also, isn't it? So like that, no, some are, some database also covering, even including the newspaper items also they're covering. So like that, you try to see which particular database in your area, subject field is going to really give you better results. It will give you will be able to give you the comprehensive you know the output will be able to give you the current information also update information also is going to really give you so this kind of things you have to always have in your mind then the which one you feel appropriate to search go to that particular database and then you really make a search of that before you really search you also have to have a search strategy interviewing the fellow who really wants and what exactly he wants convert it into your thesaurus words and then you know you some there are all the things we are really studied out here okay so that is what exactly you can really search on the keywords number one you can search on uh, you know using your keywords or title also you can really search and searching on the class number also another aspect okay these are all uh, some of the issues of all these things uh, when you are really going to search other database etc now what exactly you have to really you know do is uh, i just tell you there are um, uh, different uh, factors in selection of an appropriate database like you know how much this is what i just now i told you whether it is covering only monographs books or reports or thesis or dissertations or articles or journal articles or then uh, standards or maybe some other kinds of things that are you know what it's really covering i think that coverage all those things are really issues like you know? and in, in, in database selection i will just you know sum it up in uh, five minutes this, this could be our uh, uh, last component and um, Yes, I will uh, now tell you the most important aspect what you can really do is searching the database. This is ultimate, uh, the, the, the crucial and important uh, component of your, uh, of your, you know, the topic uh, that is, you know, searching and retrieval of uh, information from databases. Like maybe it could be even, um, of course, just now we studied about the catalogs. So the first one is, the first important method is use keywords, submit to the database and see it maybe it is a single keyword or maybe it could be a phrase phrase means more than one two words three words etc you put heart attack okay okay heart attack so like that you know you can really use uh, some words adolescents heart attack okay women heart attack so like that you can really use some kind of you know the words and uh, you put these words and search information you will really get some information. If you are not happy, if you are getting more information, what you really do is put these uh, keywords in quotation marks and ask for. I want only that specific word. You know, in the beginning one, what happens? So wherever it was appearing, it will really lift and give you so many references that will really come to your their surface and shown to you on your screen. Not required for you. You put it in quotation marks and search those keywords or pages like. So that exactly I want only on this, nothing beyond nothing like. Okay, there are some uh, facilities like uh, explored kind of, you know, facility will be there inbuilt in the software like in such and the, uh, That means uh, that subject heading plus more specifications relating to the question, like the related things also will really show to you. Like, okay, the first one is using of keywords and phrases, putting them also in, 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 in quotation marks and ask for, okay. Then use truncation also sometimes, you know. Use A word and B word, et cetera, et cetera, truncation like. Let me say truncation is you don't need to say the full word. Say child, then you put that star mark on that. Child star mark means anything after child will be considered for you. It can be child could be children, child could be say for example, childhood, child could be. So anything beyond child will be tapped by the system. So using truncation like okay wild card search you put a star or star that means it will really get you anything beyond that star it will really come you can use these stars also be you know prefix or suffix that kind of searches will really be useful for you okay if i say um, like you know child that's what i said then subject search option with uh, the keywords that are there in the thesaurus you your topic you convert into subject uh, words then search it you will really get certainly better output will really come for you okay uh, then what you can really apart from that uh, when you are constructing your own uh, search statement uh, you also have to take the standard terms uh, 
and the synonymous terms also for that word either or okay so that kind of things also you imagine use your imagination okay my topic information can also be there on this particular heading you also use that also okay that is one thing then uh, you also use sometimes uh, like you know there are uh, alternate aids and hiv aids and hiv sometimes you can be also used uh, acquired immuno something you know uh, deficiency syndrome etc isn't it aids etc so we can use full form also this this or hiv etc okay so like that you know you should be also have to think about all alternatives and all possibilities and search for information right okay now this is one aspect then followed by that uh, the most important aspect is use the boolean operators what are boolean operators and or not i want a uh, library automation okay one uh, concept word okay and in india library automation and india if you really put it like that so anything that uh, the literature documents information available to you the library automation aspects in india or relating to india will really come to you so like that what happens the and means admix of both cross section of those intertwined okay then or means i want uh, let me say um, food or nutrition uh, i want teen or adolescent okay so this kind of words alternate terms also you can really use and or not i want this and this this or this but not that okay then i can also fix i want information only in this period 2020 2010 to 2020 only i want information 2021 only i want information so this kind of things also will be there so first is word or phrase search the second one what you can really say is truncation wild card search then uh, what i was really mentioning about is uh, that uh, subject is, you know uh, terms taken from the thesaurus and searching then of course use your own imagination and then visualize uh, what could be the terms etc by which you can really search and search and of course while using you can use the most important aspect is the boolean search etc like so these are all uh, some of the search methods of how you can really search your own information like so this is all about uh, uh, your own uh, unit the unit name is i think uh, the unit topic name is database searching and search strategy i think this is all your area and um, if you have any any questions i think at the end now we have got only eight participants are there okay 10 10 is myself and kiran you minus it <laughs> there are eight <laughs> okay anybody have any questions please uh, tell me i think tomorrow could be my last session kiran at kiran tomorrow could be my last session isn't it yes no today last one is that pardon me sir open it sir anyway okay any questions from your participants gattu venkata lakshmi ranjit kumar ramya reddy who else are there any questions sir ee schedule prakaram ee roju last undi sir little loudly i am not able to sir meedi class ee roju hello sir hello ha cheppandi schedule prakaram ee roju last undi sir class avuna avun sir aithe mari complete kaledu sir just portion kaledu you think about it you can have another session i think today the last class sir అవును సార్ ఓకే ఓకే నేను మళ్ళీ కలి కావాలంటే మళ్ళీ ఇంకొక రోజు ఫర్ మీ నాట్ ఫర్ మీ ఇఫ్ యు రియల్లీ వాంట్ ఐ విల్ బి देयर ఆ ఎస్ సార్ ఎస్ అయితే ఇప్పుడు అన్ని అన్ని యూనిట్స్ కవర్ అయినాయా సార్ 16 యూనిట్స్ కవర్ అయినాయా సార్ నో ఆ 3 యూనిట్స్ ఐ థింక్ 3 ఆర్ 3 యూనిట్స్ వి హావ్ టు కవర్ లాస్ట్ 2 ప్లస్ 3 యూనిట్స్ అది 1 1 1 సెషన్ కుడ్ బి క్వైట్ 1 ఆర్ 2 ఓకే ఓకే సార్ నేను that you can take and look into it sir sir you if you really want to you will go otherwise no so sir, today sir. is my last session isn't it ah yes sir malli meeku epudanna oka vela ee one week lo malli oka sari edana session unte call cheptan sir phone chestan meeku monday before uh, i don't think uh, 
I have uh, your uh, schedule. What you have sent me, I am just opening it now. So, if one one second, one second. Uh, the schedule, Sudarshan Rao is fifth uh, is last. Ah, uh, okay. Pounds, pounds. Today is last session. Today is last. You are right. You are right. Sixth is also there for not for me. Hi sir. Uh, others are there. Divakar and Morali Pichar are there. Not me. Anyway, that's okay. Uh, then. Uh, um, our students participants any any anything they really want they, they want anything from me any any questions on this sir uh, good evening sir good evening sir i am uh, venkat lakshmi sir ah venkat lakshmi please sir ani assignment ta minimum any papers raayali sir Assignment. There is no minimum. I think uh, that Kiran will answer that question. Yes, sir. I think. But if it is subject question, you ask me. Okay. 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 Okay, sir. Okay, thanks. Right, right. So, anything from your participant side? Sir, bar written, sir. Class, it's bar written, but only. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Any, any, any questions like that? Because uh, I am not. Uh, I am a physical class. It's not a physical class. It's only a virtual class. So I am at some place and you are at some place. And um, I, I wish I can really also explain on the board, but that's not really materializing. And uh, content is more, and uh, time is less. So that way also another constraint. So whatever little possible, I have really covered in the given time. Hmm. If you have any questions, you can ask me. Otherwise, we'll wind up. Kiran. Ha. Ah, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Take take care. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks much. for the bro and then uh, your uh, madam and uh, you and uh, the participants. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. Welcome, sir. Rajesh. Am I in any doubt, sir? Hello. फारेमोरा మీకు టెలిగ్రామ్ గ్రూప్ లో లింక్ అయితే పెట్టినా కదా ఆ పెట్టారు కాకపోతే వాళ్ళకి అసలు జూమ్ లో ఎలా యాడ్ అవ్వాలి ఏంటి అసలు ఇప్పటి వరకు క్లారిటీ లేదు సార్ అసలు జూమ్ యాప్ అంటే తక్కువ మెంబర్స్ పార్టిసిపేట్ అవుతున్నారు కరెక్టే జూమ్ యాప్ డౌన్లోడ్ చేసుకోవాలమ్మా వాళ్ళకి చెప్పండి జూమ్ యాప్ డౌన్లోడ్ చేసుకోవాలి మీరు కూడా మెసేజ్ పెట్టండి జూమ్ యాప్ డౌన్లోడ్ చేసుకున్న తర్వాత మేము ఇచ్చిన లింక్ మీద క్లిక్ చేసి యూజర్ ఐడి పాస్వర్డ్ ప్రెస్ చేస్తే మీరు లాగిన్ అయిపోతారు చాలా సింపుల్ కదా మీరు కూడా చెప్పండి గ్రూప్ లో ఓకేనా ఎమ్మెల్యేసీకి వచ్చారు ఐడి ఎలా లాగిన్ అవ్వాలో తెలియదు ఆ వీడియో కానీ